During this unnecessarily hot and personally painful summer, I practically lived at the hospital, even made videos while I was there. And towards the end of summer, I started to improve, didn't have to go there as much. I asked the doctor, what's up with this improvement? Is it a combination of things I'm doing better, eating better, sleeping better? What is it? Well, of course, I'd be happy to answer that for you. It's simply because it's summer and the Detroit Pistons aren't playing basketball. Carries them both, seven straight at crunch time without Lowry Markkinen. That was a bad dream, of course. I'm not even kidding. Actual dream I had. Luckily for them, it wasn't real or I would have sued for emotional damages. Unlucky for me is that that dream was based upon a nightmarish reality. One that I profusely and unequivocally refuse to experience again. Our season ain't ending in November this year. December offseason, lockout shortened seasons aren't even that quick. We're not doing it again. These shits? No. It stays in 2024. And this? This manure ain't seeing 2025. It stays in this year. Everybody can hee <laughs> hee like Michael Jackson all they want to the end of December. But that's where it stops. That's the deadline. Because I'm watching the party die January 1st. After half a decade, we will finally be mid this season. But I can't do a damn thing about this. And Lord knows I want to. What is that? I want one. <laughs> I'm sorry, give me a moment. Is that worse than the losing streak? No, I take the losing. No, what? Well, nah, nah, nah. I take that over the losing streak. I used to be an elite theater kid too, so it's, it's whatever. Y'all some bullies though. Y'all ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Just like Adam Silver and the NBA front office ought to be ashamed of themselves for this jigsaw movie schedule. Y'all see this nonsense? Celtics, Heat, 76ers, Knicks. Did the people who created the schedule ever go to school? You don't take pop quizzes and standardized tests in the first two weeks. And another round of violations. Pacers, 76ers, Bucks, Celtics. Stop it. Stop it. Ease your asses up off my team. Give us a break for a season. At least a month. Give us a month. Without that, they try to bury us early on top of not getting foul calls and on top of us having unnecessarily large amounts of back-to-back -back games throughout the majority of the season. But for some reason, Satan, I mean, Adam Silver, chose new cheeks to spread. Cavaliers, it's your guys' turn. You guys have the most back-to-back -back games this season, or I think you're at least tied with someone. Not sure why. But I'll take it better you than us. Many of the incompetent elements that plague the Pistons have been taken out back in Old Yellard. No more Troy Weaver. No more Monty Williams. No more giving contracts to terrorists, especially Debo Weaver. If anybody had to go between he and Monty, I would have chose him. <laughs> You hear that Looney Tune music in the background as this is happening? That's how loony this is. That, that's how sad and pathetic this is. And Troy, whenever he talked, he didn't instill confidence in me. I could say this in the aftermath of him being let go, but it was something about him. He just didn't make me feel as though we're heading in the right direction. But men in defense, and these guys fit that uh, whole Harley Asar uh, defensive mindset. Um, and he talks, um, you know, um, a lot of uh, defensive uh, tenacity. Um, did you just wake up from a nap or do you need another one? The man averaged more ums per sentence than the Pistons averaged wins per month. Wake your ass up, put some pep in your step, drink you some Folgers. I need you to be energetic. He talked like a man who drafted Killian Hayes over Tyrese Halliburton. Oh wait, you did do that. Get him out of here. And Monty Williams did dumb stuff too. I don't believe he gets the lion's share of the blame for what happened to this team last season, but he definitely made things worse, and his heart was never into coaching this team. This man can't walk one step in this house without getting a paper cut by Benjamin. J.B. Bickerstaff instills in me far more confidence. Trajan instills in me far more confidence, as both the GM and the coach respectively. They talk better. They talk faster. They have more energy. 
when it comes to improving the roster, improving player development, and getting the Pistons back out of the squalor that we've been in for years now, they give you detailed explanations, as opposed to Troy Weaver, who was just drafting pieces that don't fit together. And accumulated nothing in the way of draft capital. Wasn't a damn thing in the safe worth trading to anybody. Just the has-beens and ne'er-do-wells we had on the roster being Joe Harris's, Killian Hayes. Don't nobody want that except the Nets. Don't nobody want that. When it comes to free agent destinations or locale players would be interested in playing in, Detroit is at the absolute bottom of the totem pole. So along with not having draft picks, along with having mismanaged players and pieces that don't fit together, and breaking the worst records possible, who on earth would want to come here under those circumstances, especially with the same people in charge who created that environment? You had to get them out of here, even though it looks stupid. You paying him all that money and Monty Williams, you get it. It looks bad. It looks horrendous. But I think the long term benefits outweigh the immediate nastiness that one sees when they look at the Pistons. J.B. Bickerstaff looked very good with the Cavaliers. There were some people who are Cavs fans saying there were some things that he wasn't doing, things that could have been improved upon. They understood why they had let him go in some ways. I didn't see really too much in the way of condemnation of him. As long as he doesn't bench our best players for long, extensive periods for no reason so that the front office has to step in, I'll be okay with him. And Tom Gores, if things go left, which I'm banking on them not, but if they were, I bet not have to travel to the Tibetan Alps to find your ass again like last year. You and Troy just up and vanished. Dennis Jenkins was somebody I was very excited to watch. He put up some great, amazing numbers in Summer League. He was just a knockdown shooter. He provides some great energy this team needs. And I hope he stays a part of the team for the foreseeable future because we definitely need some shooters. Bobby Clintman, another great, solid pick. Somebody who can space the floor. Somebody who's tall, who's versatile, can do many different things, especially facilitation was something that a lot of people didn't expect Tim to showcase in the way that he was showing it. He said he used to play point guard and I think he hit a growth spurt Kind of reminds me of how Anthony Davis, he kind of used to do some point guard stuff. And then, oh, I kind of got to play another position now because my height doesn't agree with what it is that I was originally playing. Old Testament name and Tobias being on the team, I'm not excited about. I'm not really happy about, but I'm not all the way negative about it because I see what he's here to do, what he can provide for the team which is shooting. Shooting, shooting, shooting is the most important thing. Cade had nobody to pass the ball to. There was no space. He was getting damn near triple teamed. We were near bottom of the league when it came to three-point shots, or I think we were for most of the season. That's unacceptable. You cannot win games in this league and in today's modern game with three-point deficiencies of that level. Asor Thompson and his defense, great, amazing. It's just when defense was played, it added up to no conversion on the other end. And you also got Marcus Sasser, still really great, good prospects on him. Jalen Duran, Jaden Ivey, Jaden Ivey at least, I don't know if there exists a future in which they may trade him because he's kind of redundant or he and Cade maybe can't play alongside each other. I really don't want that to happen because he has so many different ties to Detroit if it does happen, I can kind of see it. I won't be too surprised, but I'll feel bad about it. Jalen Duran, he was having an amazing showing for somebody who at one time was the youngest player in the league, and he was putting up double doubles each and every single night. He was also doing so at a very efficient clip. I believe he has a high ceiling. Just don't let dating Angel Drummond cloud your judgment. This is not LA. We don't have time for distractions of that nature here. In closing, I'm feeling better and better and more comfortable with being somewhat, kind of, maybe, sort of excited for the season this year for the Pistons, Trajan has acquired draft picks, things we can use to get better and round out the roster. He also has salary flexibility as well, which that was something good we were thinking about for the past two to three years. But what good is salary flexibility if it breaks its back on fodder players who don't belong on a roster? And it's at this point in the video that I must issue a warning. If the Pistons do better than mid this season, even mid levels of mid, I may start to act up.
I may start to act a fool. A commissioner whose hometown team is actually good? The Lions, Tigers, and Pistons all being good? Oh, no. Oh, no. Mm -mm. No. Nah. People would unsubscribe because I'd be so unruly. Okay.